one president in the hospital, we have to know how he's doing, period. It's the end of the analysis. Instead of obvious and transparent, we got this. Uh, well, I don't want to put a hard date on that. Uh, I don't want to put a uh, percentage on that. Uh, I'd rather not give any specific numbers. I'm not going to get into all the testing. I'm not going to go into specifics. I'm not going to go into that. And look, there are privacy rights for a patient, even if they are the president. This is a balancing test, okay? But there are certain things, therefore, that we need to have because he is not a normal private citizen. He is one of one. So you got a White House source, reportedly the chief of staff, saying the president's vitals over the last 24 hours were very concerning, and the next 48 hours will be critical in terms of his care was still not on a clear path to a full recovery. I was right after the president's doctor was saying this. The president is doing very well. We remain cautiously optimistic, um, but he's doing great. Now, what should we know? If he has fever, they should be giving us some ballpark on it so that we can kind of understand the level of battle here. Because when you hear the president's uh, kind of you know, reckoning, I've been fever free for 24 hours. Keep in mind, he's been in the hospital where medication would have been used to reduce that fever, right? Even the CDC guideline for returning to work says it's having a fever, quote, without the use of fever reducing medications. Now, I lived that. I had myself at normal, but I wasn't off the Tylenol. Then you get off the Tylenol, whatever you use, and that's what I do then you have to try to get under it. That's a very different game. I agree. They also say symptoms need to have improved, be gone. That's totally subjective. And if you get long haul, then a lot of the stuff never goes away, yeah, sure. which is part of the confusion here, which is why you need as much information as you can get. His doctor told you his symptoms are resolving and improving. Then why was he on oxygen? Yeah, question. Why did he get the remdesivir? Thank you, Chris. You know what I'm saying? This is in conflict. Why is he in the hospital? Well, just out of an abundance of caution. Okay, Lack of remdesivir, oxygen in the blood. Regeneron, oxygen. I mean, this, that's not an abundance of caution. That's a treatment protocol yes. that has to have indications, feedback. You don't give somebody oxygen for no reason. Exactly. The doctor had to clean up the situation of when the president was diagnosed and the stuff about the oxygen. So what are we to make of this? Let's bring in Philip Bump from the Washington Post. Phil, always a pleasure. I hope you and the family are well. We are thinking. You know, the straight line argument is this. Oh, you and the media bumping Cuomo, just what I need. Um, you guys, it's never enough for you. Meadows says he's okay. The doctor says he's okay. Everything else is just unnecessary parsing. What's the response to that? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think you're right. The response to that is that would be a much easier approach to take were it not for the fact that we have Meadows contradicting himself over the course of 24 hours. Yesterday, he says the president has minor symptoms. Today, in an interview on Fox News, he says that there was a scary situation that the president's blood oxygen level dropped uh, precipitously. I mean, that's not the word he used, but that's the, that was the way he described it. And so because we're not getting, we got fairly consistent messaging from the White House yesterday, which was that it was not that big a deal. But now we're learning as they're trying to say, OK, everything looks like it's heading in the right direction. We're learning that things were more significant than they actually were. That discrepancy alone means, OK, we need a lot of detail here or else we're absolutely certain that we can't be confident in the picture we're being given. Exactly. Right. And to be fair, the skepticism is a function of the past. They don't tell the truth. So you get pictures today of the president in a shirt and jacket working at Walter Reed in the presidential suite. That looks pretty good. You know what I mean? Like as somebody who had the virus, he can't be doing that badly if he's doing that. But we have to be suspicious of whether or not yes. he was put into that situation to project an image that doesn't accurately reflect his condition. I don't want to speculate that way. I wish I could take this at face value. But can, is that a prudent thing to do, given what we know? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's you go back to you never see pictures of FDR in a, in a wheelchair. You never saw pictures of John F. Kennedy in a back brace. There's a long history of presidents hiding yes. their physical ailments or exactly. hiding moments in which they were physically weak. And on top of that, a White House, which has been 
consistently uh, deceptive about President Trump's personal health, that weird trip to Walter Reed last November, for Tell example, deception. his weird physician's uh, updates that he's had over the course of his both campaign and presidency, and then just generally a White House, which is more than willing to offer misinformation about what's going on. All of those things remind me that for this president in this moment, there is a much, much, much higher bar than it would have been for a, say, John F. Kennedy, simply by virtue of who they are coming into this scenario. Yes. Right, look, I'm not going to report it um, because I don't have it confirmed and I haven't gone through the CNN vetting, but I'm telling you, I've never had anything like this happen before. I know. Um, Philip, uh, during the course of the special coverage tonight, I've gotten at least five versions from people who truth. know the president well or know people who it's are around scary. him well who have been good conduits of information for me. The stories are all over the place. It's all over the so map. So for you, what are the most important unanswered questions right now? Good question. Well, I think the fundamental unanswered question is what has been the progression for President Trump, right? Yeah. What was the moment when we actually, the White House first said, okay, he may be positive here. What were his, what were his uh, uh, symptoms from that point forward? How bad was his blood, blood, blood oxygen blood, yeah, yesterday yeah, exactly. that necessitated this uh, apparent supplemental use of oxygen? It's really important. But, you know, I, you more than anyone can attest the fact that he is doing better in this moment doesn't mean anything for tomorrow. Exactly. I do appreciate that both the doctor and Meadows have said we need to be very careful over the next 48 hours. That's a bit Precisely. of honesty that I think should be appreciated because we it's necessary for us to know what has already happened. That still doesn't necessarily tell us anything about what's going to. But because we have not gotten consistently good information about what has already happened, Namaste. it means that whatever we hear over the next 48 hours should be taken with more grains of salt than there are in you know, the, the tri-state area. Precisely. Thank you very much, Philip Bump. And I know many of you at home watching, look, I want to believe the pictures, personally. I want to believe that you know he's basically wearing whatever he wants and he's up and he's working and they're just monitoring him and he's going to make it through with some bumps. That would be great in terms of him getting out, and then let's all get after the things that matter to all of us in this country. Positive tests, another you know aspect of this. Positive tests are leading to postponed games, postponed life. In the NFL, star quarterback Cam Newton now reportedly has COVID. First of all, what does this mean about testing? Does it matter what kind of testing that they're giving him? And what do the outbreaks mean for the season? We've got a star sports analyst next, COVID. It's hitting everything. Thank you, Chris.